This video will cover the topic of delayed hypersensitivity reactions to drugs and illustrate how specific skin and patch testing techniques can help identify the drug implicated in these reactions. To understand how we approach delayed hypersensitivity reactions in the clinic, it is helpful to understand how we classify them. Delayed reactions are characterized by different reactions of varying severity that come on over several hours, generally greater than six hours, to weeks following initiation of a new drug. The reactions are often mediated specific types of T-cells called CD4 or CD8 and vary in severity from a mild or localized fixed rash to fever rash and organ involvement, organ involvement without rash, or full-blown skin necrosis. These reactions have more recently, in particular, been associated with Class one HLA genes, and this opens a pathway for prediction, early diagnosis, and prevention. As shown on this slide, the symptoms and signs differ according to the clinical phenotype. For instance, Stevens-Johnson syndrome toxic epidermal necrolysis or SJS-TEN is associated with fever, involvement of more than one mucous membrane, and skin necrosis, drug reaction with eosinophilia, and systemic symptoms or DRESS is a multi-system disease typically characterized by fever, lymphadenopathy, extensive rash, and organ involvement. Severe T-cell mediated reactions shown on this slide, such as AGEP, DRESS, and SJSTEN, also differ according to their immunopathogenesis. Fixed drug eruption, or FDE, is associated with one or more multiple fixed flat or bullous lesions that recur in the same location on drug re-exposure. Agept is characterized by a widespread erythematous and postular rash with fever, neutrophilic leukocytosis, and mild eosinophilia. Time from initiation of drug can give important clues not only to the implicated drug when multiple drugs are started together, but also the phenotype. For instance, AGEP, associated with antibiotics, has a very short latency period of 24 to 48 hours whereas DRESS can occur up to two months after first initiation of a drug. It is important to draw out the timeline of all drugs given and when they were started in relation to the onset of a drug reaction. In this example on the right, allopurinol was actually the cause of toxic epidermal necrolysis, TEN. However, amoxicillin and acetaminophen had been started to treat early signs and symptoms of TEN, and they were falsely implicated as potentially causal drugs. This is known as the protopathic effect, drawing a timeline to include all new drugs, including over-the-counter drugs and herbal products started in the last two months, is extremely important when taking a history of delayed reactions. The utility of delayed testing, such as patch testing and delayed intradermal testing, is in relation to specific delayed hypersensitivity phenotypes as shown. Other phenotypes of interest where testing may be of utility includes erythoderma associated with drugs, systemic reactivation of allergic contact dermatitis, lichnoid, drug reactions, and photoallergic reactions where a special type of patch testing called photopatch testing is performed. Intradermal testing is avoided in SJSTEN because of theoretical risk of a reaction. Patch testing can be performed in SJSTEN, but it lacks sensitivity and rarely gives helpful information. Patch testing is not thought to have utility in any drug-induced organ-specific disease or in any other eruptions such as acneiform eruptions, drug-induced lupus, or autoimmune vesiculobullus diseases such as drug-induced pemphigus. Important drug allergy history items are similar for delayed and immediate drug reactions and include details related to the drug, dose, duration, and indication when the reaction took place. Additional key features related to symptoms and signs are important. Finally, the treatment and resolution of the reaction are helpful to understand the severity and sequelae of the reaction. A list of all the drugs that the patient has or is taking should be documented.
For delayed reactions, it is particularly important to document all new drugs started within the last two months. Prior to planned delayed interdermal or patch testing, patients should be advised that they can remain on most drugs, including antihistamines. Patients must have intact, non-inflamed, and dry skin for patch testing in particular, and it should be done in flat area, typically the back or upper arm that is free of hair. Patch testing is done typically no sooner than six to eight weeks following the acute reaction, and for phenotypes such as dress, it is recommended that testing be done at least six months from the original reaction because of the risk of relapse, which may cause confusion. It would be extremely rare for intradermal or patch testing to evoke anything more than a local response. Areas that are patch tested should not be sun exposed. Patients who are on more than 10 milligrams of steroids should generally refrain from testing until they have been weaned. If not possible, testing can proceed realizing there may be a negative reaction. If you have a compounding pharmacy, the most standardized way for preparation of drugs is in pharmacy manufacturing. Your pharmacy will be able to order reagent-grade products or the trade products for preparation. The shelf life will again depend on published data, although this information may be derived from USP, Pharmacopeia, rather than being readily available in the literature. In general, most antibiotics have a stable shelf life at room temperature of one to three months. Several references exist for sample concentrations of patch tests. These have been validated in controls to find the highest non-irritating concentration that can be compounded. Generally, it is not possible to compound and use more than a 30% concentration in petrolatum. When testing a drug for the first time, a general rule is to use 1% and 10% of reagent-graded drug or 10% and 30% of the trade product. Most drugs can be formulated in petrolatum, however, a few require dissolution in water and use of a filter paper patch or filter paper in a standard path. Here is an example of rifampin being formulated from USP grade powder into a 10% patch test. Don appropriate compounding attire, gown and gloves, disinfect supplies, weigh rifampin powder. Weigh half of the petroleum jelly in an ointment jar and add rifampin powder. Standardize to final weight with petrolatum. Attach jar to the unguator and mechanically mix mixture using default settings. Speed 5 for 2 minutes. Remove jar from unguator. Remove mixing blade and replace top. Containers should be labeled appropriately. For many drugs, they can be stored at room temperature with an expiration date of up to 90 days. Patch test reagents can also be mixed in the clinic with a scale. Drug and reagent grade powdered form and petrolatum is typically the favored excipient, although water and another excipient can be used if the drug is soluble with the filter paper inside the regular tape or the molded paper tape as shown on the patient preparation slides. In the clinic, we use a scale that can measure to 0.001 grams. The powder of the drug to be patch tested is weighed out into a medicine cup. Petrolatum is added to make the correct percentage of drug in petrolatum. For example, 0.01 grams of ampicillin is weighed out and 0.09 grams petrolatum is added for a 10% ampicillin patch test. Mix with cotton tip swab until powder is fully incorporated into petrolatum and then apply to patch. The drug can also be tested in diluent by applying to a filter paper and placing it in patch test. Everything needed for drug patch testing is shown here. Drug patch tests typically use a chamber test known as fin chambers. Fin chamber is a patch test device that provides good occlusion and allows the patch test to stay in place for 48 hours. Most chambers are made of aluminum. However, those covered with a molded paper chamber on a polyurethane tape 
have the advantage of being used for both semi-solid and liquid preparations. Most fin chambers are now pre-mounted on scan-poor hypoallergenic paper tape. With a permanent marker, label all reagents according to how they will be placed on the flat part of uninflamed and hair-free skin. Apply the patch test reagents individually and mark the specific reagents used. Take care to always use a negative petrolatum control. Patch tape materials are carefully applied in each fin chamber, testing while taking care to match the label with the correct reagent. The patches should be placed on a clear, flat part of the back, making sure there is enough contact with each of the individual wells and checking the concentrations for placement and accuracy. When the chambers are appropriately fixed in a flat part of the back and the reagents are clearly marked, make sure that there is adequate contact of each individual well and cover the area with hypoallergenic paper tape to affix the patch in place. When testing on the back is not possible, either because of inflammation, pigmentation, or hair, use of the upper arm is a good alternative. The procedure for application is otherwise the same. The patch should be left undisturbed, free from moisture, water, and direct sunlight for 48 hours. At 48 hours, the patch should be gently removed, leaving the markings in place, and left to sit for 15 minutes before reading. The area can be gently cleaned with warm water to remove any residue of the drugs. The patches should be re-read at 72 hours, 96 hours, and one week, although 85% of drug patch tests will appear positive by 48 hours. The patch test reaction is graded according to the contact dermatitis guideline shown. Irritant reactions are usually easy to tell from real reactions. They typically will have appeared within 24 hours and subside before the patch is removed. Following delayed testing, the results of the testing, the action taken, and future recommendations including any further testing planned should be documented in the electronic health record. Intradermal testing is performed by the same technique for delayed testing as per immediate testing. The concentrations needed and used may be higher and the reading occurs at 24 hours with delayed readings out to 72 hours sometimes necessary. The testing is typically performed on the volar aspect of the forearm as per immediate testing and the intradermal volumes used are typically 0.02 to 0.05 milliliters. As per patch testing, there is no standardized positive control that is used for delayed intradermal testing. The criteria for a positive is simply a papule at 24 hours. Intradermal test reagents can also be prepared in the hospital pharmacy under sterile technique or in the clinic setting if pharmacy resources are not available at your hospital or clinic. The technique for delayed testing is the same as for immediate testing. The immediate reading of the intradermal test should be provided and then the patient should be advised to document any positive looking result following departure from clinic. Typically delayed intradermal reactions will appear 6 to 24 hours following their placement. Reactions will continue to intensify over the 24 to 72 hour period. The results should be documented in the electronic health record, including any action on the results, any planned future testing, and the current recommendations for avoidance of the drug and any structurally cross-reactive drugs. The concentrations of drugs used for delayed testing differ from immediate, in that the highest non-irritating concentration of a drug may be needed to evoke T-cell mediated reactions. This differs from IgE mediated reaction where there is less dose concentration dependency. The acute reaction to this patient is shown in the left frame and is a delayed rash to the radio contrast dye IOHexol or Omnipac. Delayed intradermal testing in this patient shows that delayed reactions to contrast 
can be cross-reactive across multiple agents, as shown here by the original reaction, which was a delayed rash to IOHexol. Delayed interdermal testing shows cross-reactive responses on interdermal testing to Iodoxinol and Ioversol. Here we show interlesional testing for fixed drug eruption. For fixed drug eruption, whether patch testing or interdermal testing, the drug must be applied in the lesion itself. At least some drugs should be placed around the perimeter of the hyperpigmented lesions where the source of resident T-cells mediating these reactions is thought to be the richest. Sometimes the lesions are sufficiently small, making such testing challenging, especially when there are multiple implicated drugs. This was a case of a woman with vancomycin-associated fixed drug eruption where the initial fixed spot darkened with necessary treatment and abated during desensitization. Even with intralesional testing, the sensitivity of delayed patch or interdermal testing for fixed drug eruption is less than 50%. In this patient with a delayed reaction to a joint injection of dexamethasone and methylprednisolone acetate, delayed intradermal skin testing showed a negative response to dexamethasone, which she subsequently tolerated by oral challenge, but a positive response to methylprednisolone, sodium, succinate, and acetate. This reaction was consistent with a systemic contact dermatitis reaction well described with corticosteroids. This patient was a cardiac catheterization nurse that had a delayed contact type reaction to lidocaine, as shown here by this positive delayed intradermal skin response to lidocaine with negative intradermal skin test responses to mepivacaine and ropivacaine. This is the case of a 10-year-old boy with methicillin-resistant staphylococcus aureus osteomyelitis who developed suspected dress syndrome associated with vancomycin and clindamycin. The considerations for testing in children are the same as for testing in adults. Additional challenges may exist in skin testing or keeping patches on for 48 hours in younger children and testing of any type is more difficult in children less than 3 years of age. The back is often a preferred site for interdermal testing in very young children. The decision to conduct a drug challenge in the case of a history of a delayed reaction to a drug is based on the need for the drug as well as the severity of the original reaction. Ingestion challenge is contraindicated in severe cutaneous adverse drug reactions such as DRESS and SJSTEN or other severe T-cell mediated reactions unless the potential benefit of rechallenge or sequential rechallenge outweighs risk, e.g. tuberculosis treatment in resource poor settings. Single dose challenge will not eliminate the risk of a delayed reaction, but may be adequate where delayed reaction was mild, remote, or vague. In summary, the appropriateness of patch or skin testing for delayed drug hypersensitivity should be determined by the clinical history, putative clinical phenotype, and implicated drug. Other pieces of information, such as the ex vivo or in vitro testing, such as ELISPOT or lymphocyte transformation testing, are currently researched. HLA testing may have some utility for certain drugs such as vancomycin, allopurinol, abacavir, and certain anti-epileptic drugs. However, access to HLA typing is not widely available. This video has focused on delayed hypersensitivity drug allergy testing. We hope that you have enjoyed it and it has been educational. While we could not cover every scenario in which delayed hypersensitivity drug allergy testing could be performed, here are some resources that you can use to learn more about non-irritating concentrations and further testing modalities. Please also see our video on immediate hypersensitivity drug allergy testing.